I know I had a cloning video many, many years ago, and I've been known to take clones a lot of different ways, and this way that I'm taking is uh, maybe the cheapest possible way. I actually learned this from my buddy Elite Genetics on Instagram. Uh, he does a lot of clones, and he was looking for the cheapest way to do clones that's also fast, and he discovered this way. So uh, I'm taking clones in the facility right now, and I just want to show you guys how I'm doing it. So what we have here is a tray and this insert. I think this is like a 72 place insert, six by 12. And I like to use these thick, heavy duty, strong trays. The flimsy ones just break all the time. So it's worth the investment to get the better ones. So this type of cloning, this cloning method, uh, it's cheap because you're using just pure cocoa. You don't have to buy rapid rooters. You don't have to use rock wool. You don't have to worry about cleaning your aero cloner, which is a total pain in the ass because I've used aero cloners a lot and I do like them. But it's like if you don't get it perfectly clean, the next time you take clones, they're all going to rot out and die. So I do like aero cloners, but uh, this is a really cheap method that works well. So the first thing we're doing is we're taking just pure cocoa and spreading it around and getting all these holes filled in. push it around like this. You can kind of go at an angle with your hand and kind of push down and that'll help put it in there or force it in there. But what I actually like to do is mount it up, kind of cover it like this. And now you want to pack this cocoa tight guys. You don't leave this loose, you do it tight. So with my fingers I just go along and get all these packed in. So basically, instead of using our rapid rooters or jiffy pellets or whatever, we're just making our own out of pure cocoa, saving us some money. Okay, I got them packed in there. Now I'm gonna just go back and forth a little bit and smooth this off. The next thing I'm going to do is, you can just keep focusing there. Saturate this cocoa with some water. I've got a five gallon bucket and I put a little, little bit of Sensi Grow A and B in here. A little more B than A, or a little more A than B. The one with all the micronutrients. I put more of, that's the darker one. My pH is 5.7, my EC is 0.4. And in the past I've done this with just RO water, so no nutrients at all, and it worked just fine too. But the clones will start to fade out when they start rooting and growing, in which case you need to feed them with nutrients to keep them nice and green. So that was about a liter of water that I just put in. And you don't have to get each site totally saturated or the same amount as the rest of the sites because after we do that, we're going to take more cocoa, pile it back up and do the same thing we did just a minute ago. But this time, I'm not gonna pack them all down hard with my fingers, like individually like I did last time. I'm just gonna pack kind of gently across all of it like that. Here we go, smooth it off again. Okay, now we will pour water a second time. This time we're going to make sure that they're all totally saturated. Now 
I just kind of smooth it out. Just a little bit more on top just to fill in all the holes. Okay, now right now, there's probably a good amount of water in the tray underneath this. Let's look and see. Yep, you see that water down there? So we're just gonna slosh that around a little bit to make sure the bottoms of all these get wet. And now I'm going to just pour out that excess water underneath and uh, we'll go ahead and move to the next step. Okay guys, so the next step is you wanna get a tool. This is maybe like a eighth inch or smaller. Four millimeter. Four millimeter? Four millimeter Allen wrench. Just something like a little punch, but you want it narrow because you want it to be more narrow than the stock of your clone. And you just want to go through and poke holes down in the center of all your sights. So I'm just going to go through like this, just poke a hole in the center. That way when we put our clones in, they will uh, go in easily and not get damaged or broken. There'll be a little hole for them to go into. The next step is to cut the actual clones. I'm taking mochi gelato clones today, and this is one of two mochi gelato mother plants that I have. It's the second one I've actually taken a bunch of clones already. But because I need to take a lot of clones, I'm cutting them extra small. So I just start here at the top, cut something about like that, and then I'll just work my way down. So like That'll be a clone there, and that's a small one. That's a double top clone, but it'll work. And then that's my third branch down. Okay, and I actually trim up. I don't always do this, but I'm trying to take like nice pretty clones today. So I trim up the leaves like that. The double top clone, same thing. I'll just trim them up. That way they're not too crowded in these trays. Other times, guys, I'll just cut branches and stick them in and they'll be all crowded. Not even throw a dome on top and they'll root just fine. It just all depends. I think for this round, I will put domes on just because I don't want to chance the clones getting too dry. I don't think it's quite humid enough in the veg room for the clones to be domeless, so I'll dome them. But yeah, so uh, I just take a bunch of clones like that. I usually do six at a time, so there's three Let's get one more down here. Get a double top right there. Six. Okay, now let's pan over here. I've got my six clones. And what I've been doing today, and I don't always do it, but I'll lay all six clones out there. And the reason why I'm doing six is because the rows are six wide. And actually, shoot, I forgot. I, got, I need to take two more to finish filming that row, so hold on a second. Okay. okay, so I have two more here. Trim them up nice and pretty. So what I've been doing today, since I'm taking some really small clones, these are all about like four to five inches, but some of them have been even smaller. Um, to keep them from crowding, I'll kind of like lay them out here and grab the two smallest ones, which these are all pretty good size, and I'll make those my ends. So this is the smallest one, so I'll take this one. I've got some Clonex gel. I don't prefer Clonex but that's what I have to use, so that's what I'm using. I put it in my little hole that I poked, and then I take my fingers and smash it down hard. I want to pack that down nice and tight in there. Now I'm taking my littlest one. I reserve the little ones for the ends, so they don't get overshadowed by being in the middle. Put that in the hole, squish it down. 
Okay. Oh, I think the bottom's busted out of that one. Oh, it's cracked. The tree's cracked there. Looks like it's squished down hard. like that. We've got one more row to take. We'll do that off camera. So when we're done, it just ends up looking like this. So we've got three trays almost full. Just finish that up. I'll spray a little bit of water on top. Spray a little bit of water inside the domes and then put the domes on here and just put them in there in the bedroom in indirect lighting. And hopefully in about a week, I'll have roots coming out. One more thing I forgot to add, guys. There's a downside to taking clones like this, and that is after they're rooted and it's time to plant them, it can be really difficult to get them out of the trays. So the best way to do it is let the clones actually dry out if you water them. So if they're wet and you try and push these out, they'll all get stuck in there and the roots will get tangled and it's just a total pain in the ass. You'll have to take a, or end up taking a razor blade and you'll have to cut each one out which is very time consuming. So <clears throat> the trick is make sure they're well rooted before you remove them and make sure they're pretty much dry. And if they're nice and dry and hard and you made them, pack them down tight when you, when you packed it in the first place, uh, like I did in the beginning of the video, you should be able to just push with your finger from the bottom and the thing will just pop right out. The last time I made clones here, which was the first time I made, actually I made clones a couple times, I used these, I ended up using these because we had a bunch of them, like, oh, I'll try that out. And it was a total pain in the ass because I packed everything down in there, things rooted, but when it came time to take them out, I couldn't pop them out. So I actually took a piece of wood and I cut it to fit, basically made it like a one by one and then cut it corner to corner so I could like push it in there and pop them out from underneath. But that was a hassle. And this way is a hassle too, especially if they're wet. So. Trick is, like I said, just make sure the cocoa is nice and dry and then they'll pop right out for you. If you have to take them out when they're wet, you're gonna end up having to probably cut this insert apart in order to get them out. All right guys, that's it for how I'm making clones these days. Any questions or comments, just let me know, peace.